it makes you angry when you see, you know, the injustices that are really happening that are there and talking about the effects on our health in the long run, it really makes you mad, you know? So yeah, I'm looking forward to learning how to correct it and do some things about it. The RLA was created because communities are the missing piece of the overall public health infrastructure to reduce public health inequities and disparities. People in neighborhood communities need to be part of the solution, and the RLA provides that opportunity to learn new knowledge through a curriculum-based project, which teaches people regular evidence-based strategies for making positive changes in their communities that improve public safety, food, and physical activity environments. All of Wood Garden's mission is to work with students and families from diverse backgrounds through organic gardening, nutrition education, and environmental stewardship, empowering them to be healthy, active citizens. And when the opportunity for the Resident Leadership Academy um, was available, we thought it was a perfect fit for what All of Wood is already doing, and it was an opportunity for us to get engaged even more in our community. And while primarily we work with students and national school district, we knew that we wanted to connect more with adults, and it was a match made in heaven. That was actually a value that went across this group. And remember, you know, we're gonna have discussions, right? We're not necessarily gonna see eye to eye. This is a bridging group, please tell it. But it's the same things happen to us, happen to Lemon Grove. I mean, that's what we were. <laughs> hey, I'm on you. I still don't believe that one. <laughs> well, I'm in a, in a mentoring program called Mana de San Diego, and I have a mentor named Amanda. And she found out that there was a leadership um, class here. And she found it very convenient that it was in my city, and then how she would also like to learn about it. And then I also, I also thought um, it would help me a lot because it also shows me that even though I'm only 12, I can also help out with my community. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted to come here to the program was to find ways in which Vanessa can, can learn about her community, but also a space where she can express um, things that she might not be able to or learn things that she might not be able to in her regular class. I grew up here in National City so I know a lot about it here. I live where there's a lot of auto body shops which for me isn't that um, good and it's not healthy and especially because there's a school um, right next to it right beside it where there's a lot of kids who are breathing in that air and it's not it's not good for them and then it also, there's, when there's too many, there's a lot of oil spills, which causes a lot of damage to not just the kids there, but the residents that live around there. So it's really impressive because she's 12 years old and everyone in the group is an adult. However, she understands the material because she lives in this community. And it's amazing to see a young mind engaged and then thirsty for the knowledge and also be able to apply it in her life uh, as she grows up. She doesn't have to wait until she's adult, an adult to advocate on behalf of her family, of her neighborhood, and really learning about different issues right on her street and who she would need to speak with or who she would need to collaborate with to make a difference. And to see the growth with this program in the short time period that's only been about two months once a week that's very rewarding for me as a mentor to see her personal growth to have those conversations during and after the class what she's understanding and then how she's applying it in her life week by week that's really cool i wanted to reach out to people that have the same interest as myself, that are looking to make a change, and that are also aware that it's harder to do it on your own. My personal experience emphasizes on the underpass here and this area, which is the northeast side of National City. It's the first part of National City that you see coming in from southeast San Diego. And you'll see trash alongside on this great big field where the 805 runs through and 
it doesn't have to be that way. In the next year or two years from now, we will see the community garden here um, that we will be working on together as a group. It will grow uh, to different parts of this neighborhood and also extend. We're hoping to get the, the nature walk going and some murals up. So by next year, we're, hopefully when you come in from Southeast San Diego, the first thing you see is not trash, but a beautiful nature walk, a sign that says, welcome to National City with beautiful cultural art there. And I really see that happening in the next two years. And so I think what surprises me is that there's other people out there who really care about these issues too. And seeing people uh, week after week show up to these workshops and sit down and really do some hard thinking and having discussions about, hey, what can we do for our neighborhoods and how can we improve our communities? Well, we're a young nonprofit in our nascent stages, and the opportunity to partner w with CHIP and this, this initiative was that we were able to get people here to participate, but they had the knowledge and the expertise and the training to actually offer the workshop, something that we wouldn't have been able to do on our own. And so a combination with our relationships directly with community members and our neighbors, we were able to invite them to participate, and CHIP was able to offer the knowledge and expertise to um, go through these series of workshops. We developed this training manual, which comprises the 10 sessions of the Resident Leadership Academy. We did it in nine months. And we did so um, with the help of an external review committee. Um, the external review committee was a group that was brought together in order to oversee the entire process of the Resident Leadership Academy. So it brought together groups, um, philanthropic groups, um, universities, uh, community-based organizations, the county reps for the San Diego County of all the different regions, and in addition, just uh, social services, different people from those areas. And they were all asked um, over the course of a few meetings whether they would be interested in taking on this charge of overlooking and overseeing the whole thing. I mean, it's, um, it's quite you know, a, a big task to have undertaken. And they, those that agreed, it was about 20, 25. Some of them do it via online or you know, do it not necessarily being in the meetings, but they try to find their ways to get their information to us. And it was really, it's been really helpful. They've gotten over our drafts of our curriculum. They were, went over our presentation. So basically, we pitch everything to them. And then with their expertise, say, does this sound like something that is the right way to go about it? And once we get kind of their OK, uh, we proceed and we move forward and then we show them the results of uh, what we've t talked about. Lemon Grove is, it's got that small town appeal and often it seems like we've been forgotten. You know, we are a community of people who want to have a place to gather and feel safe and because of the last couple years for the recession and also uh, many families losing their jobs, we had some of the highest foreclosures in the county here in Lemon Grove. And at the same time, our food banks, they saw in one year a jump of over 600% of participation. So it was important for us um, to look at ways we could support our families and our community. So this was an opportunity to take some outside experience bring it in and provide some leadership skills with a project as the end results that will make a change. Kind of so when you talk about like um, the, the housing element, put that house right over there by the, this grocery store right quick, you know, because you know it has those types of uh, benefits. And some walkability stuff, a lot of it has to do with a lot of money. And so you wouldn't have the dumping because you'd have pedestrians back there parking and walking through the walkways. I don't know if you just want to put in a raised crosswalk there. That'll slow cars down just across the race. Because they're asking for the whole city to participate. In um, I knew that you know that it's important to know your neighbors. I knew that. I knew that um, our community needed things. Uh, how to go about getting that done. Now that was something that uh, RLA helped me with, uh, helped us all with. Uh, the steps that needed to be taken. You know, you can't go from A to Z, you have to go A, B, C, and to, or in order to get to where you want to go. Columns of trees on the side where... What I've learned is um, identifying sort of 
uh, uh, successful neighborhoods that have access to healthy food environments or things like that. And, and, and a lot of videos were shown and a lot of photographs were shown to go, you know, okay and not okay. Um, but uh, like I said, there's a lot of um, longtime residents here and, you know, it's like putting on that, that comfortable pair of old slippers, you know, you just, you're just kind of okay with it, you know. You'd like some better things, but you know you're not, you know, a fancy place. But uh, I, I don't think you need to be a fancy place to really uh, uh, create an environment where, let's say, you know, having sidewalks or having uh, access to healthy food, for example, uh, is is really uh, it can be a reality. If you're talking about things which are the residents that actually stepped up and wanted to participate in this um, resident leadership academy and their desire to be here, their respectability of each other, their common feeling of doing service and making their community a safer place for everyone has gone beyond my expectations. And they're already starting to talk about having it continue. We don't want it to be just this one stop shop. What are we gonna be after so that we can be a place that people can come and we can provide resources and continue making changes? We developed a five-page request for proposals, and we put it out as an opportunity to work with CHIP on this Resident Leadership Academy to upwards of 50 organizations, and we got 19 respondents in three weeks, okay? And from there, the external review committee um, divided each of the applicants in terms of region, where they came from, north, um, central, south, east, and we picked for contractors and the organizations like Project New Village, like the Lemon Grove School District, like Oliver Gardens and Learning Center, and Vista Community Clinic, a representative of those organizations that have a foundation in, in these communities, and that's why they were chosen. Project New Village is a community-based organization that for the last 14 or so years has worked on community wellness issues, organizing people in southeastern San Diego to live healthier lives. So when an RFP came out about training leaders in community wellness, it just seemed like a natural fit. We serve uh, 22 neighborhoods in southeastern San Diego, and of this area, we chose four neighborhoods, Mountain View, Choyas View, Mount Hope, and Lincoln Park because they're all right next to one another and those are areas that we're currently working with our farmers market and um, community garden. I help a sister by the name of Diane Moss uh, run the farmers market off of uh, Euclid. She actually told me about it and she said I think it would be a good program for me to partake in and so I was like okay you know communication I understand what you're saying but family we don't get the family involved there won't be no community family or the community right as far as like bringing and being able to see this community that I grew up with born and raised all my life but to be able to see it through a different pair of lenses it was very interesting and it was very motivating. We're brought up in this society thinking that we have choices, but if all those choices are dictated by the environment that we live in, what choices do we really have, you know? So in a lot of ways, the choices that we, that we, that we hold on to, the decisions that we think that we're able to make and not make are not our own. And that's very important. So that's something that I picked up from ROLA. So one thing that, I, that stuck with me is like uh, network systems, you know, it's about uh, a little over 10 people left in the class and we went around and uh, everybody talked about like a lot of the things that they do outside of the program and so we was able to see that everybody has a big support system, you know, everybody has a uh, Everybody has access to certain networks, networking abilities with certain organizations and things like that, that if everybody came together, we'd be very powerful, very powerful and very influential in this community. 
So I do see a level of enthusiasm. Uh, last week they chose leadership for the Resident Leadership Academy. It was interesting to look at the process that they went through and the two folks that came out being the leaders, if you will, or spokespersons for the group. And I particularly like that it wasn't just one or two leaders, that there were various areas in which people could show leadership. So if you're a media person, if you're a spokesperson, if you're a data person, that there were, and they considered other things like uh, language and interpretation. And in a diverse community like ours, that makes sense. It's very appropriate. I'm doing something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I've made friends doing it who have knowledge, who have the connections. And these are going to be lifelong friends. So it's impacted my life a lot already. All of the work that we do is around community organizing, necessarily meaning we need to work with residents. So if residents are more informed by a curriculum base that it, it was my understanding is this what was going to be used in the Resident Leadership Academy, that it would further the work that we were doing to get people not only, I think people care about where they live, but give them some tools, if you will, to change things for the better. The Resident Leadership Academy is a 10 session curriculum. Okay. Each session is about two and a half hours in length. Of the 10 sessions, we do a broad orientation. And the point of that orientation is to make sure that local residents know that environments matter. The environments and the social conditions that people live in matter in people's life's trajectory. Um, the second part is community building principles. And then social determinants of health really talk more about environmental factors and how you know, our communities are uh, well resourced and other communities aren't particularly well resources, re resourced. And what do those environments create? And then sessions four, five, six literally are evidence-based strategies that look at crime prevention, safe walkable communities, healthy food systems, uh, leadership advocacy, policy development. So right in that piece of sessions four to seven, we're coming through with the best knowledge that we know so that they could learn what, the, what consists of these uh, evidence-based strategies and how will they use them to tailor the development of the action plan to improve in their community. And sessions eight, nine, and 10 are really about facilitating the neighborhood self-determination. We go through the steps of creating an action plan from A to Z. The, the process that they've gone through is logical, objective, and smart. The curriculum was very in-depth. And the best part about it is on each chapter, they went through and made slides and did little captions and things and talked about the things for us. Because you know, if you go through and read something and read something, you don't get as much out of it as you do with that. So that was good. Oh my goodness, there were a lot of phases. There was one about the nutrition. There was one about health. There was one about um, uh, the safety of the environment. You know, we compare differences in other neighborhoods and our neighborhoods and um, they're actually, um, laws in certain ways that things should be made and they're just not followed more in our neighborhood. Um, we talked about the effect it has on our lifespan, the things that, and you don't ever even think about it. You know, all the uh, auto body shops around in our neighborhood in the residential areas and not in other places. And there's a reasons for that. We don't know, you know, people in our community or other people, we don't know that there's a reason they don't put you know, industrial things by, because they do it in our neighborhood. If you're bringing such information to the community, you want to make sure that the community can actually receive it, understand it, and then apply it. And in some cases, when you limit yourself to one language, that ends up being hard for more people to get involved. Our biggest challenge was actually in Oceanside because that was a group that was all Hispanic for the most part. Latinos, that um, English was their second language, not their first. 
But, you know, what was interesting was that that group told us that we were doing them a disfavor by bringing in outside translators and interpreters. And, and so they asked us to try and go ahead and do the curriculum in English with them and just give them those time and spaces to make sure that they, they're going through the information. And so, you know, Dana and I being bilingual, it was very helpful to be able to say, yeah, okay, let's do it that way. And then in times during breaks or before or after class, they could always come up to us and filter the information further. So if they didn't understand something, if they thought they got it, but they just wanted to clarify, then we took the time to say, okay, yeah, let's go over that one more time. Our approach to the neighborhood was to talk to some of the informal leaders that live there, that have been there for many years. And so we started our approach by talking to them first and then also finding out who else would be interested in participating in this leadership academy. Um, through that, we went door to door, knocking, finding these individuals that are active in their community and that tend to participate in some of the community functions. I love to live here um, in Oceanside. I grew up here um, for over 30 years. And um, now, like I said, I want to give back to the community. My children walk these streets. Um, they go to the same schools that I went to. And um, I want a safe walkability uh, place for my children. I always wanted to be a community leader. And I didn't know how to get started. So going to the RLA, I have learned how to start, how to become one, and I got more confident there. Um, the, the specific classes was that it really stayed in my mind, was the one with the food and the health. Um, in the poverty level where we're living at in this community, there's a lot of children that are obese and families that um, do not know how to um, teach their children about health and the importance of how to eat healthy. And um, that's where I want to become a mentor and try to teach the families in my community how um, to stop that obesity. So the leadership development that came with the, um, the training program here was um, a great benefit to, to Oceanside. That leadership development is priceless and it just was a win-win for, for everybody. Daniel Correa. It was a wonderful experience. It was the first time that the curriculum was piloted with a group of awesome leaders. And, you know, we had a couple residents in that group that had over 40 year history in Eastside Oceanside communities, but then we also had a lot of new blood as well. The impact of the curriculum has been amazing. It, it really provided the uh, promotores with the tools that they needed, actually the residents. I'm calling them promotores because I just have a passion for them and they have that leadership skill and you can see that among these residents. But you can also see that it's the camaraderie, the tools and also the networking, not only with themselves but also with the city officials. And one of the things that one of them was telling me was that they, didn't, they weren't aware that you, they can go to their city department and tell them about changes that they would like to see. That neighborhood was just beautiful in so many ways. It's, a, it's an area that I feel like is just so much leadership potential, so much community uh, potential. And um, they came up with, with some really good campaigns. The, the process facilitates literally this maturation in the leaders to understand how they're part of the solution and then we end up with um, the creation and the bona fide action plans for improving their community that are smart and doable. And then they have their coming out party in, in the form of a celebration. The celebrations are uh, inspiring in the sense that they, all of the people that go through the RLA back each other up and doing community testimonials. Um, facilitating as a master of ceremonies or a mistress of ceremonies and then they talk through the elements of their action plan in teams of two um, you know step by step item one item two item three and then they close it and then the rest of the celebration is about networking with the targets that they've literally invited that they hope will buy into their campaigns and that they'll work with them in a public-private partnership to get it done. No one person, no one entity, no one nonprofit, no one government agency can, 
can solve any of society's problems. It has to come from a collective group of people and part of that has to be community members standing up and asking for you know, improved situations in, in their neighborhoods. Ultimately, I just think that it's amazing how we've been able to go from place to place, meet with all these residents, connect with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and really know what they're talking about and have them feel like we are there for them, with them, um, but more importantly, to get them to be able to do for themselves what they've always wanted to. And um, that whether we're here today or not tomorrow, that the residents are the ones that are really empowered to really go out there and make these changes happen for themselves. Our vision is to develop this as a leadership pipeline that's offered in multiple communities. And on another note, we would like to train other community-based organizations how to do this. I think it's very empowering that we're learning this framework of how we can make change, how we can advocate, how we can prepare ourselves to make a difference. When your entire community kind of knows the name of the game, then they can play the game, you know? And when they can't, it makes it a little bit harder. So for me, ultimately, it would be great to be able to share this with more communities, with more residents in the same communities, um, with anybody who wants to see a holistic approach to public health and find a way to make some changes, you know? And do it in a way that you're having fun, you're getting to know people. It's different, it's fresh, um, but it does good, you know? It ultimately does a lot of good. Working with the city or other groups, uh, we, we, we learned about who we need to speak to within the hierarchy of, like, let's say, city government. Um, when we want to address certain issues that we, uh, uh, depending on the type of issue it is, um, who to address, whether it's the planning department, you know, the city council, um, we understood and, and we saw the tree and the hierarchy of, of, of people that we need to, to target to, you know, just explain what it is that we're trying to do and, and basically get on board. The most important number one thing that I learned was to be that confident, strong leader and continue um, helping my community and making it grow stronger, healthier, and safe. This is my property and I've been wanting to do, we've wanted to do something for it with it a long time. In the last couple of years we wanted to do a community garden but I didn't know how. And thankfully I hooked up with Ms. Moss and the RLA and this is going to be the, Encanto, the first Encanto community garden. There's going to be lots of them but this will be the first one. So, yes I am. I'm going to have fresh food right in the back of my house. <laughs>